description of the car, of the guy that took off from your car is just like yours. But that's half of Miami. Ball headed okay. with a beard. Uh, even if he had dreads, it dreads with a beard. Okay. But then that's it's not. I mean, like like I said, my kids. I called because my car got stolen. My kids are over there. They don't even know what's so going what on. So what time was your car? I'm gonna reach you your rights real quick. All right. Telling you guys got the wrong guy. I can confirm where I was and I can even confirm my activities. I recently logged off of a VPN at my job. Okay. At what time? Roughly before I came over here, before I called you guys. But I'm telling you, you guys got the wrong guy. On June 1st, 2018, Samuel Scott Jr., a 44-year-old man, contacted the Miami Police Department to report a theft of his black 2006 Jeep from his aunt's residence in Buena Vista, Florida. Unfortunately, instead of receiving assistance, Scott was unexpectedly detained by five Miami PD officers. The officers claimed that they mistook Scott for the suspect they were searching for due to his resemblance to the description, a bald, heavyset, black male, approximately six foot, two inches tall, wearing a white tank top. The description of the car, of the guy that took off from your car is just like yours. But that's half of Miami, bald headed with a beard. It's worth noting, the incident involving Samuel Scott Jr. highlights an alarming potential for police misconduct and abuse of power. During the encounter, Mr. Scott, the victim, remained calm and composed despite his confusion of why the officers mistook him for the suspect. He displayed no signs of aggression and didn't even go as far as raising his voice while dealing with the police. Despite his calm demeanor, an officer is seen brandishing his taser, seemingly ready to use force against an innocent citizen seeking help. This unfortunate situation underscores how inflated egos of some police officers can quickly escalate a simple encounter into a traumatic incident, resulting in innocent individuals being tasered, detained, arrested, or worse. Such incidents serve as a poignant reminder of the urgent need for police reform and accountability to ensure the safety and well-being of all citizens. Right now, for sure. No, I'm talking to her now. Yeah. All right. Cool. 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 Take all your stuff. We can't take this. So this. Where, um, can you, like, what about my kids? I mean, I, I, I literally, I went over there to see my kids and everything. My kids are. Where are your kids? I was with them. <laughs> Where are they? They're over there. At, what's the name? They're over at my cousin's house. So, when? huh? When? What? I've been over there since. What? I want to say at least five. What? Five thirty, six o'clock. I, I actually okay. walked back over here. You have two IDs? Yeah. That's not good. Yeah. Well, one is an ID and one is a driver's license. Okay. Sorry. Right. Are you going to take me to see my kids or something? Or am I going to you be the team? Uh-huh. Okay. When we get the story together, I'll let you know what's up, okay? All right. So, see you. Okay. Okay. 
to your kids, but I'm going to go buy and yeah, check it out. because I brought him over there to play. Yeah, That's where my other little cousin is. I need an address so I can. If you, if you, if you ask my aunt who's right there, that, that house right there, she could probably give you the address or something or call them. I don't have the address. They can actually confirm I was there. Mr. Scott promptly informed the Miami PD of his precise whereabouts, providing alibis from his family members and colleagues attesting to his innocence. Despite his cooperation and possession of multiple forms of identification, including his work ID, Mr. Scott was wrongfully arrested for the theft of his own vehicle. It's worth noting that one of the officers even held Mr. Scott's work ID, allowing him to verify Mr. Scott's story. We could be wrong, but it's uncommon for a car thief to possess three different forms of identification, including a state ID, a driver's license, and a work ID while committing crime. Such a situation highlights a lack of critical thinking on the part of the officers involved, suggesting a predisposition to apprehend Mr. Scott without considering his victimhood. In response, Mr. Scott has initiated legal proceedings seeking compensation of a half million dollars. While the legal process unfolds, Mr. Scott and his legal team have sought a public apology from the department, which they are still waiting for. All right, listen. I'm gonna reach you your rights real quick. All right. I'm telling you guys that I can confirm where I was and I can even confirm my activities. I recently logged off of the VPN at my job. Okay. At what time? Roughly before I came over here, before I called you guys. Okay. But I'm telling you, you guys got the wrong guy. Okay. The description of the car, of the guy that took off from your car is just like yours. But that's half of Miami, bald-headed okay. with a beard. Uh, even if he had dreads, it dreads with a beard. Okay. But then that's, it's not fair. I mean, like like I said, my kids, I called because my car got stolen. My kids are over there. They don't even know what's so going what on. So what time was your car stolen? I told you, probably around about five. I didn't pay attention to the time. I really just jumped out of the car to go see. That's it. If you want, like I said, we can go. Like, I had my kids and stuff like that. Dropped them off. Came over to, to say hi. And I went, I mean, I don't know what happened. I don't. I mean, like I said, I know the people that stay across there, over here, all over the place. I don't know what happened. My car just, somebody jumped in, drove off. And I'm sorry, but I'm telling you, I didn't, I didn't do it. I mean, literally, I, I mean, why would I call the police? <laughs> I mean, I call because my car is stolen. I mean, I, how me and my kids are going to get home? My pillow, my my work ID, my work stuff, all of that stuff is in there. Why would I? That's why I'm like, what? what's, why am I in handcuffs? If I'm calling them and, and, and I'm. All right, just give me a second, okay? All right. I'm open the window so he's in hand there. Also, I don't really know or look at my record. I've never been arrested. Hell, one of, our, one of my one good friend of mine is like city of Miami, Dennis Jackson. He used to be my pastor. My unto retired city of Miami police officer. You never been arrested before? No. You sure about that? Yeah. Never been arrested. Ex military. Never been arrested. What's the last for your social? Again, another wrongful arrest committed by police officers. Officers stated that they believe Mr. Scott was actually the suspect and not the victim due to him matching a description that would match half of the city. Let me read this article to you. Following his arrest, Mr. Scott was charged with leaving the scene of an accident, false reporting of a crime, failure to carry a concealed weapon license and possession of marijuana. Those charges were ultimately dropped according to the Miami-Dade State Attorney's Office. Scott is suing the city of Miami and the five officers, Jonathan Guzman, Michael Bloom, Brandon Williams, Miguel Hernandez, and Randy Cario. Mr. Scott is claiming they searched him unlawfully, wrongly imprisoned him, and racially profiled him. As we saw in the video, these cops were looking to make an arrest. One cop was even looking to taser someone. They had no thought of serving the public. I'll keep you updated with this one as more unfold. Make sure you know your rights and always, always, always record the police. With that being said, we the People University, signing off. In a world shrouded in secrecy, where trust is fragile and justice hangs in the balance, one brave author, Abaya Israel, has unveiled the truth, living in the world of tyranny.
A gripping expose by Abaya Israel uncovers the hidden stories that have haunted police departments across America. Dive into the heart-pounding pages of a book that pulls no punches, revealing shocking secrets hidden behind the badge. Inside, you'll discover stories of cops fighting cops, police chiefs entangled in unprofessional relationships, and unspoken truths about deaths that were swept under the rug. Abaya Israel powerful narrative will leave you on the edge of your seat unveiling a side of law enforcement you've never seen before. Are you ready to uncover the hidden world of tyranny that's been kept in the shadows for far too long? Readers are calling it a revelation, a wake-up call, and a courageous masterpiece that's long overdue. Living in the World of Tyranny by Abaya Israel, who is also the driving force behind We the People University, the popular YouTube channel that has been exposing police corruption for over two years, is a riveting revelation, a must-read for those who seek the truth. But that's not all. Don't miss out on the book that's making waves across the nation. Get your copy of Living in the World of Tyranny now, and be prepared to have your perspective forever changed.